as a generation of graphics cards, these last ones ruled. The RTX 3080 and RX 6800 XT cards pack two of the best gaming GPUs we've ever seen, and you'd be really happy with either of those in your rig. And probably really lucky given the absolute dearth of hardware that's blighted the last couple of years. But things are clearing up in supply terms, and this new generation of graphics cards is shaping up to deliver a real titanic battle between the two GPU heavyweights. I'm PC Gamer's hardware Brit Dave, and this is what we can expect from AMD and Nvidia's new graphics card generations. Oh yeah, Intel. About them. Apparently, it's still making graphics cards. All right, so first off, we need to make it absolutely clear that neither AMD nor Nvidia have made any official announcements about their next gen GPU releases. So that would be the RDNA 3 and Ada Lovelace architectural designs. So everything I'm discussing here is based on leaks, rumors, and speculation. Isn't that fun? So yeah, everything could change at the last minute, depending on whether there have been purposeful leaks looking to debate the other company, or if performance or price targets have suddenly changed. The main takeaway from the rumour mill, however, is that we're looking at a set of cards that will comfortably trump the best of the last generation, and may even make you grateful that you couldn't buy a GPU given the potential performance uplift, or may make you curse the day you said, to hell with it, and uh, pay three times the MSRP for a second-hand RTX 3070. First up is how AMD is going to follow the excellent RX 6000 series of cards. We're guessing it's going to be creatively called the RX 7000 series and be completely different to the HD 7000 series cards it launched back in 2012. Graphics cards, man. Anyway, the first to land is apparently going to be the mid-range Navi 33 GPU sometime in October this year, and that would be called something like the Radeon RX 7700 XT. And the rumours state that we're looking at a card equal to the standard rasterized performance of the RX 6900 XT. Now that's a hell of a jump in GPU tier performance for the red team, giving you'd expect that to be a sub $500 GPU, offering the same performance as the last gen $1000 card. At its heart is said to be a monolithic chip design, and is essentially an updated version of the current Navi 21 GPU, just using the newer 6 nanometer process from TSMC for increased efficiency and performance. Where things get really interesting for AMD is in what's happening further up the stack. The key Twitter leakers, the tweakers, seem to be confident that the Navi 32 and Navi 31 GPUs will be multi-chip designs, somewhat along the lines of the chiplet makeup of AMD's Ryzen CPUs. But what they can't agree on is whether they're going to have multiple compute chiplets, currently known as GCD or graphics compute dies, or whether they'll just pair a single GCD with separate multi-cache dies or MCDs to make up the top-end cards. Now why is that important? Well, the chiplet design of AMD's Ryzen processors has had the effect of making them both cheaper to manufacture at the high end and has meant that they can house many more cores than a traditional monolithic processor. In graphics cards, where GPUs have gotten so damn big that with current manufacturing equipment it's almost impossible to make them any larger, being able to do the same thing would be a positive boon for whoever can make it work. Well that's the main thing, making it work, because it's really tough to do, like real tough in gaming. In raw computation terms, matching GPUs together to complete a single task is relatively straightforward, and the performance can scale linearly through the more GPUs you add. When it comes to visual frames for a game, however, well, that's way, way harder. Remember what a car crash SLI and Crossfire were? Yeah, that. Throw another $500 GPU at the problem and get maybe 20% higher frame rates? No thanks. The hope in the community, however, has previously been that the super speedy Magic Infinity Fabric Interconnect from AMD would make a card using a pair of GCDs practically invisible to the gaming PC as a whole. Our performance would scale in an almost linear fashion in games. The latest rumours, however, suggest that that's not going to be the case. And a multi-GCD design is still only going to be focused on a compute card like a Radeon Instinct and not a Radeon gaming GPU. Honestly, I'm okay with that. I feel like chiplets are still the future for graphics cards, and even just shifting the cache off onto a separate chip within the die could make for serious gains in die size and affordability. But whoever makes the move to a multi-compute die first is almost inevitably going to face some potentially severe teething problems, where some games or systems are only able to see a single chiplet, or there is some unforeseen latency issues where frames are sent to other chiplets and get stuck somewhere in the ether and you get some weird brutal micro stutters. So maybe it's not ready for primetime gaming just yet. So yeah, give me a monolithic chip that just works and I'll be happy, especially as the current rumours of AMD shipping a 70 odd teraflop card at the top end, sporting more than 12,000 shaders, well that sounds really quite exciting. The latest rumours suggest we might not have long to wait to find out whether the Nvidia tweakers are right, because the suggestion is that we'll see the new Ada Lovelace generation of graphics cards sometime in August. That's not far away now, but given the green team has only recently launched its RTX 3090 Ti and has traditionally launched towards the end of the year around September time, it's probably not such a big surprise. Though maybe with AMD's RDNA 3 promise, maybe that's got Jensen worried and he might want to get the new cards out ahead of the competition, or maybe he'll just want to give us some new toys to 
play all those new games on. Seriously, man, where are all the games? Initially, Lovelace or Ada or the new RTX 40 series or whatever NVIDIA chooses to call its new cards, well, that was mainly just going to represent a tweak to the Ampere design on a new 6 nanometer process node. But now the rumors are that that's changed, and these new GPUs will be far more than a simple refresh and will use a more advanced TSMC node codenamed N4. There were also some suggestions that it was testing a 900 watt card, which would have been a monster and frankly offensive. To be honest, I don't want to have to buy a whole separate power supply just to power my graphics card. But that too has changed with the latest speculation claiming that the upcoming RTX 4090, expected to be the top of the new G4 stack at launch, that will have twice the rasterized performance of the RTX 3090, have some 16,000 floating point shaders, and only sport a 450 watt TDP. In short, still a goddamn monster. So rumored to deliver twice the 4K gaming performance, not just rasterized performance. Lower down the stack, the rumoured specs are pretty tasty too, and you'd hope if the top chip is twice that of the last generation, there'll be some impressive gen on gen gains in the middle order of Nvidia's cards too. Now it is worth noting that there's no hint of chiplets in this GeForce generation, with Nvidia instead focusing on a brute force monolithic approach, relying on the change in process node to do all the heavy lifting on the efficiency side. Though efficiency may very well not be the watchword in this coming generation, as the red and green team fight tooth and nail for the outright gaming performance crown. And Intel. It all looks so promising for its inaugural Arc Alchemist GPUs, back when there was a serious graphics card drought on and they were going to ship their cards in the spring. It could have launched competitive cards at a great price and had the PC gaming world lapping them up with no alternative. But no dice. That's not happening, because the laptop versions of Intel's first discrete GPU architecture in an age have been placed in Samsung laptops firmly stuck in South Korea, and they're only now starting to trickle out into the wider world. Its desktop cards will be similarly region locked, with the low-end versions being China exclusive and the higher-end cards only likely to hit the market well, well into the second half of this year. So that's almost a year after they were initially meant to release, and then only in pre-built PCs too. By the time they do arrive, I'd expect the new AMD and Nvidia cards to either be here or be imminent, and that's going to make them look pretty late to the party. Intel's then going to have to do some serious price adjustments to make what will be resolutely mid-range cards suddenly relevant in a changing GPU market at the end of the year. Tough times. Poor Alchemist. Roll on Battle Mage, I guess. It's all shaping up to be a fascinating generation of shiny new pixel pushers for us to fantasize about sticking in our PCs, and then just be a bit sad because we can't afford them or our power supplies can't power them. But hey, at least Starfield isn't coming out now, and can you think of anything else that might tax your GPU enough to make you desperate for an upgrade? Answers in the comments, please. Those release schedules are sure looking barren right now. Anyway. Still, at the very least, we can all spare a thought for the poor folk who bought an RTX 3090 Ti or 6950 XT recently, right? So thanks for watching, stay beautiful, and check out our YouTube channel and PCGamer.com for more gamey techie stuff.